that's cringe. I have to wait. But like, I did my makeup. Avo, test, one, two, three. <laughs> the cringe is gonna start. This is all a big talk. Hello everyone, welcome to this whole little video. I thought of doing a little fancier video today, because why not, let's try. Um, this video is going to be a follow-up from my stories that I created the other day about doing an illustration um, from quarantine. It's called Quarantine Draw In. It's on my Instagram saved little things i don't know how they called in english because <laughs> my instagram is in portuguese but anyway so if you didn't see that part maybe consider going there because this is a follow-up and here we're gonna mainly focus on editing so i hope you like it um before we start uh i just want to leave a little talk here with you guys um i hope you're safe i hope you're healthy and i hope you're dealing with this crazy situation a bit better um i know for some of us it's really hard and if you are going for a hard time i'm with you don't worry i've been there um i'm slowly getting into the groove and trying to be more positive but it's been hard for me too and it's okay just like Take your time. If you're going through a hard time, take your time, rest, give yourself time, you deserve it. You know, um, go watch a movie, go watch a nostalgic movie or play a game. Um, I love watching Disney movies or Studio Ghibli movies because it's my safe space. They're really cute and they're really beautiful, like the artwork. So that for me is like, helps me out. Or YouTube, I love YouTube, but sometimes YouTube can be a bit more tricky can not be super happy <laughs> so yeah do that uh take your time don't worry it's fine just think that things are gonna get better soon and then you're gonna become a creative queen like we but no but for real i just don't want anyone to watch this video and feel pressured and feel like oh i'm such shit i don't i don't have motivation to do this like trust me i've been there and it felt really bad watching other people being like, I'm doing yoga. And I'm like, no. So if you're feeling that way, don't worry. You don't have to do anything in this video. Just watch it if you want to. If you don't want to, move on, relax, and then come back for us. But please come back because I quit. I'm doing some effort here. Okay. Oh, by the way, sidetrack. Some series that I love to watch when I'm feeling bad are Bob's Burgers, cause like, yeah, queen. I'm like, my spirit animal is Linda. Um, and then also Gumball, I love Gumball. The artwork is so cool and it's so funny and lighthearted and silly and I love it. So that's my little recommendations. Back to the video. Okay, now as the creative queens, the productivity seeking queens, the pretending queens is fine. We're all pretending that is fine. But it has the good part. Sometimes pretending actually makes you feel good, so that's what we want, okay? <laughs> if you're one of those queens, that's it. That's you. You and me, you listen to me, let's start. So, yeah, I guess to a point where you're like, first of all, trying to be cute and productive and do cool, cute things. And also, you're bored, so you wanna get entertained. So this video is for you. But before we start, we have to have a little talk, okay? If you want to continue, let's be honest here. This video is for every fucking one. Don't come here and tell me, oh, B, I don't know how to draw or this and that. No, this video is for everyone. This video is for you that never drawn in this whole life, which I doubt because like, you've been a kid. I know, we draw at school and stuff. It's for those that think, Oh, I'm a medical student. You think I know how to draw? You guys are so talented. Stop. It's also for those who are like artists or studying a creative field and maybe want some extra tips from B&B in the house. But I want to address the people that think they don't know how to draw. 
don't worry you know how to draw because you know what i know it feels like super deep like you look at people's work that know what they are doing and you're like oh no i don't know what i'm doing help me don't worry it's fine i feel the same every time someone writes a word or reads or says something smart about like scientific thing that's the way i feel when yeah i feel the same way you're feeling you know this feeling of like oh my god i'm not good enough that's what i feel at least you don't feel that with reading girl so you can do this plus art is fun art is like no one gives a fuck art is like whatever do whatever you want it's not that serious so if you're feeling shaky and quaky come over we'll teach you <laughs> so in conclusion don't pressure yourself this is not a pressure time this is fun time with bb this is learning time and just have fun and yeah so if you watch the first part of course you know i'm gonna break it down right now for you we have to draw and then take a picture and then edit and then make an illustration and that's the whole point right uh today is gonna be focused on editing but of course like you have to have the rest so you can edit right um i would say have fun look out of your window draw draw a flower draw something funny draw a cartoon from your childhood it doesn't need to be good it just needs to be fun just do whatever you want okay i recommend pinterest for images and stuff but if still you think this is too hard and you don't know where to start because i get you it's hard it's overwhelming in the end <laughs> I'm so good and I'm gonna do a little doodle class for everyone. You can do it. Anyone can fucking do it. So you can do it too. Stay to the end and I'll teach you how to do some fun doodles. Okay, rent over. Now it's time to start. Um, first thing I'm gonna show you is how to take a picture that will serve as a scanning. So then we can put it on the computer and edit, which is So, uh, all I used to do, my drawings, was my bullet journal and a pencil that I literally just lost, but it's fine. I'll find her because we're in isolation, so she has to be somewhere near. And my bullet journal. So, the reason why I use my bullet journal is because I forgot to bring a sketchbook for my isolation uh, because I stressed back. But it's fine. Uh, this is a perfect example. You don't need nice paper you don't need even white paper because girl i'm using this kind of paper and it worked for me so it's gonna work for you because i know you have printer paper i know you have some kind of good paper better than this paper but even if you don't follow my example and you can do it too so there's no excuses <laughs> you're welcome so yeah I've been using my bullet journal and yes, I've heard your comments, bullet journal tutorial is coming. I'm gonna do a little video um, explaining how you can do a bullet journal, even if you don't have like one of these classic, you know, graded paper kind of thing. I just grabbed one of my pages um, somewhere. Yeah. And I drew a little sketch um this is my fashion diaries basically what i do is i draw a little doodle of myself every day i started doing them a couple months about back um because i wanted to work on building um capsule closet um and what i used to do is draw a little drawing of my outfits every day so that um, I start realizing which clothes I actually wear so I can build my um, capsule closet. But of course now in quarantine, um, I only have like five outfits, if so. So it's more for me to keep my sanity really. Now I'm reusing them for creating some content for my Instagram. So this is a, my doodles, but you don't have to do the same. Like just do whatever you want. Like you can literally just draw hearts you can literally just draw whatever you want a flower what i'm gonna do next is photograph them so then i can take them to 
Photoshop to edit them. Cool, so we're now in a different room because time has passed and the lighting has changed in the other room. Um, and that's actually my first tip for you guys. Uh, follow the natural sunlight. So you're gonna want to do this part with in a room that is well lit. Usually I would say with sun because girls, we're like trying to be resourceful and stuff. Um, but if you have lighting, like equipment in your house, feel free. It'll make it things easier for you. But if you're like me and you have the bare minimums, um, just use sunlight. Go to a room where the sun is hitting um, and try not to do it like after four or five because the light is going to start to dim a little. Um, anyway, so this is how um, I have a couple of pages to take a picture. So I have this one and I have this one and I'm gonna show you how I do it because I'm using a sketchbook um, I'm gonna need to like deal with this situation so what I use a lot to help me is these guys these guys uh, and I'm just gonna clip one side and then I'm gonna clip the other side so the page is lying laying lying um, as flat as possible so one more in here cool and now I'm gonna use my phone oh yeah to take the picture wow we're so fancy we have two cameras at the same time um yeah so I'm just gonna try to make the camera parallel to sketchbook so you don't have any like deforming of the image oops so that's it the first one is done really easy and I'm gonna do the second one So that's done now and I'm gonna move on to transferring this ones, these guys to my computer and then I'm gonna edit them. You don't wanna send them over like Instagram or something because that's gonna make your files lose quality. So what you wanna do is like transfer it by email or drive and open it on your computer to or your tablet so we can edit it. Welcome to the brain of a third year illustration student don't worry this is all we care about actually we only care about this so first thing we're gonna open our photoshop or whatever program you're using and we're gonna go file new and we're gonna choose a4 just because it's easy right now the important part let's give it a name uh i'm gonna call it uh qd because it's quarantine drawing and i'm gonna make it 600 dpi so this is the important part we want to make the resolution higher because we're working with already a bad file like low quality kind of scan um so 600 dpi it's it's gonna have extra detail so we want that <laughs> yes queen please um yeah make sure it's pixel per inch because i learned the hard way that pixel per centimeter is not what you want um also uh, color mode we're not going to change it we're going to keep rgb because we're working digitally and i don't think we're going to print this but uh anyways nowadays printers modern printers do use rgb color mode so we don't need to change it okay so now we're going to click create um yeah so this is our file uh, i'm gonna unlock the background here so then we can hide it if we want and have transparency and the next star uh, the next <laughs> step is to go to file open and we're gonna open our pictures so in my case I have two images so we're gonna open and for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna show you how to edit this, this little girl so what I do I'm using I'm using this lasso tool uh, but not this one I'm using this one um, if you want to change between them, what you do is you click like longer into it or double click and you'll change it to this one. So I'm going to cut this one out. 
and then I'm gonna click com command C or if you're in PC you do control C and what that does is copy um, now we're gonna go to our file and do command V or command control V um, yeah every time I say command if you're in a PC you use control and if you don't know what the command key looks like in a Mac is the one that has a little like flower thing is next to the space bar okay anyways now we have our girl and she's looking really tiny we don't want that we want her big and thick so what we're gonna do is go to one of these corners and hold shift so it keeps the same size like the proportions and we're gonna make her around this size okay okay now we have our girl and we're gonna click uh, Control R. So your Photoshop maybe looks like this. We're gonna hit Control or Command R, and we're gonna have these bits here on the top. Um, and I'm gonna mark the top of her head and the top of, and the bottom of her feet, just because I'm gonna be editing other girls, so I want them all to be in the same size. But again, I think this is a nice thing to, for you guys to learn as well. Um, now we're gonna actually go and edit the image. So I'm gonna zoom. Um, for you to zoom, there's here on the side this little magnifying glass, and I'm gonna click a couple of times. And then I'm gonna start editing the image. I'm gonna go to image. Oh, girl, wait. Yeah, I'm gonna go to image adjustment brightness and contrast first and I'm gonna make it a tad more bright and a lot more contrast right um, then I'm gonna go to levels and we're gonna make it even more crisp okay so usually when you would be editing a normal type of image you wouldn't do things so aggressive we're trying to be very dramatic because we're gonna only have the lines right so what we want is all these lines to be super dark um, so yeah, the image is going to look a bit distorted. You shouldn't do this for normal files, but in this case, that's how it's going to work. Okay. So in the levels, we're going to use the middle thingy and push it to this side, make it quite dark. And then we're going to make the light very light. Okay. So as you can see on the top here is really good, but on the bottom here is quite dark still. So what I do is I click okay. And now I'm gonna get this tool, the selection tool, I think. I don't know what it's called, but whatever. We're gonna grab it and select only the bottom part of the image. And we're gonna do again, image, adjustments, and levels. And we're gonna do the same thing. So push this one to the side and push the white one to the side or drag or whatever you wanna say. Cool, so now it's looking a bit more, yeah, more crisp. Yes, we have some differences here, but it doesn't really matter because we're going to clean all of that out, right? Next step is to go to image and go to selective color. I love this too. What we're going to do is go to the whites and we're going to take all the black down, all the yellow down, all the magenta and all the cyan. What we're trying to do is to have a pure white, right? Now, I actually noticed in this head, her head is looking a bit like less dark. So what I'm going to do is the same as before. Select the hair, the head, I guess. And go to image adjustments. And we're going to go to levels. And I'm going to make it darker. Cool. That's it. And then to take this selection off, you do command D. Now we're going to go to cleaning the actual image so if we take the transparency or I guess in this case if we put on the transparency we can see how this is still white we don't want that right because if we're gonna be coloring it we want to just have the line so what we're gonna do is get the magic wand tool and make sure the tolerance is around let's try 40 for now and let me see yeah, I think this works fine. Uh, we're gonna delete all the whites that it selects in, at first, but of course we're gonna need to clean it better and stuff. So we do that, and as you can see, most of it is gone now. We still have some bits of white, which we're gonna clean now. And also we still have 
all the texture from the paper, which we're also going to get rid of. Let's start with the whites. So we're going to go do more zoom. Uh, I'm using my mouse mouse pad. Um, yeah, so if you split like two fingers, it zooms in, but you again, you can just use the magnifying glass. And again, to the magic, magic wand, magic tool, whatever it's called, we're gonna select the whites. So this is selected and I'm gonna hold shift and that's, let's keep, <laughs> keep your finger in the shift girl, don't let it go. Like it depends on you, okay? Hold that shift forever until I tell you so and click on the whites and do that and select all the little white bits kill, kill. now we click I think it's enter no it's not enter it's the arrow looking key you know you click that and it cleans and now we do command D to deselect all those little bits okay oh I still have this girl bye we don't like you bye okay cool I think that's it for my character and now we're gonna clean all these little sketchy lines that I don't want personally if you want them you can keep it it's fine but also we're gonna want to clean this texture right so I'm gonna show you how I do that so usually there's two ways I do this Either I use the eraser, which is here, and we can make it a bit bigger and literally like erase, right? You just erase whatever you want. Or you can use again this tool, the cutting lasso tool, whatever it's called, and we can select whatever we want, like cut off basically, right? And we enter. Um, the arrow thingy to clean cool so that's how i do it and now i'm gonna zoom in and do all that bits uh usually at this point i put white on the background so you can see better all the different textures so i'm gonna do that and i'll be back so yeah guys this is the part where you want to turn on some music or turn on some podcast or something and just go with the flow it takes a little bit of time like of course plus you want to be careful but I really enjoy this part I'm not gonna lie and it feels like almost like a second drawing to me um, I truly enjoy doing this um, and also I will be doing this for like a couple other drawings I'm not gonna show you all in the video but yeah, I really enjoy this, doing this part. I think it's really fun. It's really satisfying to clean all the little bits. Um, yeah, and that's it. Great. So as you can see, I've done all the inside details and everything. And now what we're going to do is take all these bits around um, in the outside of the character. So for that, I'm going to use the lasso tool thingy and just go for it um select everything and basically what i'm doing is drawing like an outside bubble to my little character <laughs> and then i want to teach you this really cool trick for beginners of course maybe if you already know photoshop this is not new for you but i thought about like giving a bit of a beginner's thing because I want some of you guys to try this out for the first time and encourage you to just have fun and do something different. So yeah, I'm going to select this all. We're now done. So we have the character the selected. If we would click the arrow thingy, what we would do is delete our character. We don't want that, right? So we're going to click command Z. And that, what that does is like reverses. So it's like, oh, nope, nope, I don't want this. Okay, let's go back. It's control or command Z. So um, yeah, what we want to do is delete everything else besides her. So what we do is that we go select, inverse. And a cool thing about Photoshop is that all these controls on the keyboard, um, it says here on the side, I always just do this way, but you can learn these little controls and just use them so I'm gonna click that and now as you can see the paper is also selected and we're gonna click 
uh, the arrow and that's it it's all clean and if we take the white background then you can see this is all transparent and we only have the lines and that's what we want because now we're gonna um, save the file and paint it and if you want to paint it behind it so if you're just gonna use Photoshop um, you do another layer here on the corner and this paper thingy um, and you go to here to the colors and we could pick a little pink for example and you use the brush to paint so we're gonna make it a bit bigger um, I'm using like a textured brush um, oh actually let me show you this so I use that textured brush for this illustrations because let's see here it's not super dark um, what I did is I made the brush really tiny and I used black and I just went over it um, yeah and just made it darker so that you can also use that for your um, scan illustration thingy um, yeah always remember to draw in the right layer too so you saw how I swapped between the layers and to draw that and I'm gonna go back to the painting layer what you can also do is double click and give it a name so we can write color in this one and line on this one um, yeah so you go to the color layer and if you want to paint it on your computer uh, then that's what we do we go to the brush that's not the brush the brush and we give a little skin tone whatever and then you just paint it oh yeah and you change the brush that's the whole point I want to show um, make it bigger whatever you want and then you just go at it and paint it and is really easy of course I'm using my just my laptop so I'm using the laptop mouse thingy which is not super comfortable you can use a uh, fancier you know mouse the ones you connect or you can use a tablet if you want to go to file first of all make sure you don't have the whites turned on right you don't want the white on you just want this little square thingy and we're gonna go to file save now we're gonna not save as Photoshop you could save it as Photoshop if you want to save the file and all the layers and stuff but we're I'm not personally gonna do that or I'm gonna do is save it as a PNG PNG is a file that allows transparency because if I save it as JPEG um, it's not gonna have it, it's gonna be white again and we don't want that so I'm gonna save it as PNG and also PNG is a bigger kind of files so it maintains the quality so that's what we want for now right later on after we paint and everything we if we want to upload it for example for Instagram you will want to save it as a JPEG because JPEG in, is less, is more compressed kind of file, is it less quality kind of file, right? Uh, although we'll still have a lot of quality because we're doing 600 dpi, but um, yeah, for now, for the time being, if you're gonna go with me to the tablet and paint it on your tablet, what you want to do is save it as PNG. So we're gonna click that. And I'm gonna save it to the desktop because that's where I want it but you could change it to anywhere else and then we're gonna click save cool that's it now if you want to keep this file and you want to keep editing stuff on this file uh, when you before you go you should save it save it as Photoshop right but I don't want that just because I don't really need this file I already have another file somewhere else so I'm just gonna close it um, Cool. so now is our little PNG and what I'm gonna do is put it on my drive so I'm gonna do a new window I'm gonna open my drive and I'm just gonna put my file there cool that's it and that allow us to then open it in my tablet you could also just like put it on iCloud or whatever you use. I use Drive all the time, but you can do whatever. Amazing, so that's it. The final part we've all been waiting for. Now I'm just on my tablet um, doing the actual illustration. So I got all my little doodles and they're clean now and I'm just arranging them and 
coloring it and doing the actual illustration. Um, I hope you guys had fun with this um, and wait until the end for the little doodles that I'm going to be showing you. Now I'm going to teach you how to do some simple doodles, so if you don't have any idea of what you want to do, then this can maybe give you a little test run, and of course if you're already like someone that draws and is an illustrator maybe or something, then draw whatever you want and just apply what we're doing here to your drawings and to your illustrations. Okay, we're gonna start with very basic doodles. Um, let's do some like flowers and leaves um, because that's something I draw all the time on my bullet journal and stuff. So for a basic little leaf, we do a little this. Yep. And then I like to do some and don't try to be too perfect. I think it's funny to I think it's funny to have like little imperfections. But I guess that's up to you. So some variants of leaves. This is probably my favorite ones. It's like the not matching the leaf vein I guess so you do one in the middle and then you do like two together here and two more separate and another one I think that's pretty cute now some like branches kind of thing so you always start with a little thing <laughs> and then I like to do something like this it's kind of hard to explain I guess you can just watch and see what I mean and then you can leave it like that but I like to paint it kind of like this not very well painted kind of thing so let me do one more so I like doing a little jaggedy curved thingy but you can also do like a straight one and then from the top I do a little leaf and then one more and then one more and then sometimes I like adding a little branch like the leaf is still growing or something and then we paint it and same thing if you want to do more like straight and then you can do a variance and do a little like this instead another type of leaf I like to do is this and it's very quick and very messy and very fun so it's literally like you start you go to the top you do a little sketch a ruley and I think they look super cute personally other types of leaf I like to do is like a rounded leaf so we'll do like that, that like that that's pretty cute and we can do the same but like different sizes and we can paint it inside I think these are my main my main leaves doodles then I also sometimes like to add some grass and the way I do grass in my sketches is like this I just do some little how do you say some little oh my god I don't know how to speak today some little scratches I guess sticks and then if you want to make them look like they're flying with the wind I just like turn them to the side and it looks like the wind is blowing to this side like this way um yeah let's do a flower now um I love doing these little cute flowers again I'm gonna show you first and then explain Oh, another leaf I like to do is like a circle and then the same thing. So instead of being like a teardrop, it's literally a circle. And then you do this 
can put a small one if you want. And then like that. That's really fun too. I love it. So yeah, the way I draw this little flower thing is, I don't know what kind of flower they're supposed to be. I guess they could be like a rose or they can be like a tulip. But I guess tulips are more like that, aren't they? I think they are. But anyways, so how I do this one. So you're gonna start with the mouth of the flower, I would say. I imagine they're like spitting. <laughs> and then you do like a circle. And again, I think the whole point of this is to be sketchy and like not perfect kind of thing. Um, and then she's like kind of drooping to the side. And then I add little leaves here. And then some strokes. And then you can give her another leaf. A little bud growing on the side. Whatever. Let's try to do it by like standing up. So we would do the stem, stem of the flower. A little leaf. And then you do like a half circle. You do the little mouth. And then I like doing this bits. So this is my favorite flower to draw like really silly little flower, but you can always just draw a basic little flower. So you do the center and then some petals. But again, I quite like this like sketchy vibe, like it doesn't need to be perfect, you know what I mean? I think that's the whole point is to do a little sketchy funny thing. So now we're gonna learn how to do some jars and cups so we can put our flower in the cup. So for a normal like water cup, I usually just start like this and then you wanna do like almost parallel, but they're like a bit going inside like that. You know what I mean? And then I close it on the bottom and then I like giving a little bottom to the cup or alternately, alternatively, well, alternatively, you can give it a top. So we have a little three dimensional aspect, but this is like not well, like the perspective of an actual glass should be something like this, right? But we're not doing that. We're like stylizing it. So we're doing flat, okay? And then we give a little perspective. And then I like adding some details. So you can do like that classic like cream glass. You can change the side. You can give it a little some dots or whatever you want. Like have fun with it, you know? You can give it some stripes. Or maybe perhaps if you wanna do the stripes, you'll give it a bottom and then do a little stripes on the top. So that's the basic cup. Then we can do like a teacup, so we would do the same, but I usually would round up, so there's like some different element to it. And then I like coming here and doing a little space, so we can tell it's like a thicker kind of cup, mug in this case, I guess. And then we give it a little thingy to hold. And then we can do whatever design we want, we can give it a heart or... um. We can give it like my favorite mug back in my place is like this mug with like the bottom is black and then it has some like speckles. So you can do whatever you want, you know, you can paint the inside if you want. And I, in this time, in this moment is where I ask you guys to look at what's around you. So you can apply this to any cup you want. So for example, next to me, I have this cup where I used to put my pencil bits, whatever. So I'm gonna try to do it, but in drawing, in drawing mode. So what I would do is maybe make it a bit wider and then it's rounded and then you can give it a little thickness and then you add like the dots, you know, like whatever you wanna do. So yeah, you can always like look at around you and see the things you have around you and create them. Um, 
Another thing I like to do is jars to put my flowers in. So it's like a little rectangle skinny legend. And then we're gonna do this. And now we give it a bottom. And now we can give the little like screwing bits on the top. And then I like putting flowers on it. So let's think. I'm gonna do like a little random kind of flower. Ta da! Little flower cutie. Um, yeah, on, when you put the flower on the jar, I would say. Um, don't forget that the stem, stem, whatever, you know what I mean, has to touch the bottom so you can tell like this is a three dimensional space and this is somewhere inside that because if you had the jar, but then if you make your flower go like that, then the flower is out of the jar. But if you make the flower not touch, <coughs> if you make the flower <laughs> um if you make the flower like not touch this bit um it's gonna look like the flower is flying away out of the jar you know what i mean so we want a little midterm yeah and sometimes i add other flowers too to the jar you know you can add whatever you want some leaves And that's it. That's pretty cute. So yeah, maybe try to like do a little row of jars and cups all together, you know, like little jars. That's a really fun illustration I like to do. Um, you can make a bowl, you know, like I would say, look at the jars you have around in your house and draw them for fun, you know, try to draw them in this style or if you want you can draw them in like more of a realistic style but yeah I would say it's more fun to do it this way but that's personal taste okay so now we're gonna draw some fun characters the first one I thought about showing you guys because it's really fun and it's one of my favorite characters um it's Finn the human from Adventure Time so I'm gonna draw him here while I explain to you why I like it so much and then I show you how I do it but yeah if you didn't notice the gypsy time is like a play on adventure time um yeah it's really silly it all started with my tumblr accounts when I was like 12 or something so yeah I really like adventure time like he's not my favorite character overall in the cartoon but He's really cute. So it's really easy. I'm gonna show you how I do it. So first we're gonna start with like this side of his face. And we're gonna do a little bloop. And then we're gonna extend it and do another bloop. And this is his ears, right? And then we close. And he's looking like the bottom of a sofa. But no, it's Finn's head. And then we make the head. But what you want is to give quite a lot of space so for example you don't want it to be like this because how the fuck you're gonna draw the face huh so let's do it like that and then the fun thing about adventure time is they have really ex like good expressions but really easy so the basic is like a little mouth and a little eyes you can give him little cheeks if he's shy but then they have like loads of other expressions you can make them like be sleepy I would say again it's all about referencing um, a lot of people are afraid of like looking for references and they think it's copying but when you actually learn art when you go to school um, for art you learn that referencing and master copies are actually the way you learn the best so don't be afraid like go to google type adventure time thin and look at all the different expressions right so now i'm gonna give him a little hmm, I don't know actually. What should we do? I think I'm gonna give him this like sleepy face because I have so much more stuff to show you. So he's like kind of sleepy, kind of cutie cutes. And then maybe you wanna, you know, write a little bubble. I love adding bubbles 
to my drawing. I love adding, adding bubbles like that. Like they're stuck, you know, to the character. But yeah, um, that's fun. Then we can draw maybe LSP, which is Lampy Space Princess. She's my favorite character. And she's like a cloud. So she's like that. She's a curvy queen. And then she has this little like tentacles. She only has three, but because we don't care, as I say, we're not here to be perfect. We do whatever we want. So because we don't care, I'm giving her a little bit more tentacles, but I think the actual design is only three. And then again, you can just do a little eyes and then she's always like super sassy being like blah, 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 blah. And then a little star. That's it. That's very basic. So I'm gonna, again, once more, we do the top is like a bigger kind of thing. And then usually I give her like two smaller ones, lumps, and then two big ones again, because usually her arms are around here, you know? And now we give her like two smaller bumps and then the three like tentacles. And then she always has a star and two eyes. You can give her some cheeks. But then you can like have fun with it, you know, and play around instead of a star. You can give her like a pearl or you can give her a flower or you can not give her and you can dress her up and give her a little like flower on the head or whatever. She's super sassy, so she would love it. So that's another really quick, easy character to draw. Now, um, I have some other like harder kind of drawings to do, right? So we're gonna do that in this side. Now we're going to like advance mode. Um, let's go. Okay, so let's go to this side. Um, but before, actually, I forgot. We have Bimo. Um, Bimo is another character from Adventure Time. He's like a video game. So, in general, that's him there. Um, I know he has like some buttons and whatever. And then you can be like sitting down. So that's Bimo. But maybe I can show you that another time. But just for a reference, go look at it, have fun. Adventure Time is really easy to draw and really fun to draw. So I will give it a go. Okay, let's go to this side and let's start with Pop of Girls. Um, Cause that's fun, right? So, oh my God, I'm gonna smudge all of this. It's fine, whatever. I should have started this side, but who cares? Um, okay, Pop of Girls, let's draw. Um, I think her name is... No, it's not butter. Yeah, yeah, it's buttercup, right? The green one. So you have bubbles, the blue one. Blossom is the pink one, and then buttercup, yeah, right. Okay, so um, with buttercup, I used to be, well, I have like huge eyes, so all my life I've been called like pop of girl. Um, and I used to be uh, buttercup because my sister wanted to be blossom. And I used to be so mad about it. Um, yeah, I didn't like being her, but it's fine. Now I do actually like it because she has a fringe like me and stuff. But yeah, um, again, we're doing like sketchy versions of these characters, right? Because we don't want to be boring and do like too much deep. Because if you want to learn how to draw deep, then I think this is my first time drawing Pop of Girls in like a long time. Okay, so that's kind of like I just looked at a reference and this is kind of like the basics of her, right? But we're gonna make her more cute. So we're gonna do a circle, but as you can see, I did my circle a bit squished. So like that's a normal circle and then you can like squish it super much or you can just squish it a little. And I think squishing a little is kind of cute. It's kind of like thin, you know, it's a little squish. Um, so yeah, we're gonna do that. 
and then we're gonna do the eyes but i want to do them different i think to try let's see will it work it could work we don't know give it a little fringe do, 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 do. and then she has like little hair going this way and then she has a little dress you you again like guys of course this is like silly and funny it's not properly drawn like it's not perfect we don't want to be perfect we want to have fun so that's it i'm not gonna draw her like the way she is in the cartoon because i can't be bothered um but yeah this is like a easy way to draw a pop-up girl it's basically like a circle and then the actual ones they have like the hair imagine the hair is here and then their eyes come like to the side of the face and they have little cute mouths but i have to be honest i don't really like their eyes they're kind of creepy to draw like they look really cute in the actual illustrations but I guess I'm not used to draw them so I'm maybe screwing somewhere um but anyways again it's all about practicing you know you have to get used to draw something so you're gonna have to repeat it maybe once or twice um this kind of stuff I draw all the time that's why I'm like <laughs> whatever you know but for example pop up girls I haven't drawn in ages so Cool, that can work. Again, go look at the image and try to figure out how you do it. But this is an easy version. And then also you can change stuff up. If you don't like her eyes, give her different eyes, try. And then it becomes like your own character or I guess you can call it like fan art if you want to. But yeah, so that's it. And now we're gonna go to the extreme difficulty. We're gonna draw Bart Simpson for all the people that don't want to draw cutesy loose uh, we're gonna draw Bart Simpson so we can flex on the haters <laughs> okay again um, I haven't drawn Bart Simpson in ages um, I did draw him before for when I was in animation school um, we did some like fun animations with them um, with the Simpsons but yeah so I'm literally gonna learn relearn how to draw Bart Simpson right now with you guys right but I think he's a bit more complex so I'm I'm gonna do do a doodle version of him and then I'm gonna do um correct version of him right so how I would draw him is I would give him the spiky hair and then I would give him the two eyes right and then he has this bit on the brow he has a cute little nose coming through then a mouth and his mouth go like all the way up and then we have the ears and his neck and his lip and then he has a t-shirt so this is how i would draw him i'll give him maybe a chick who knows but now let's actually like look at the actual Bart Simpson. I would try to maybe sketch a little. So without pressuring the paper, I would create this shape. He's like a like a cylinder kind of rectangle shape. And then he has two eyes. This one kind of comes out a bit. And then the other one, but the other one is in front. So once we actually finish this drawing, this is in front and this one comes behind and then his nose starts in his eyes and again it's kind of like in front of that second eye and then he has a little ear and the ear is underneath the level of like the eyes cool and then i'm gonna extend this because 
still kind of has a little neck. And then the mouth kind of starts here and it's a bit curved. And then from here you have that. It's kind of hard to explain while you're drawing, so just try to watch and it's all about looking at your reference and trying to understand the shapes, right? Um, yeah, so then he has like the, uh, not upper lip, the inverse of that, the downer lip. <laughs> um, and then his neck, and then his t-shirt, color thingy, whatever. Okay, and then his hair is like spiky, so we're gonna already do like, okay, that. And then here, he has a little brow there. I forgot, it's fine. You see, like, we don't need to be perfect. Then his ear starts inside. Da -da, da -da, da -da. Cool, and then his nose. And actually this bottom part of the nose doesn't go as far as the top one. And then we do the eye, the other eye. Give him a little pupil, pupil, pupils, whatever, you know what I mean. And then his ear is like a little thing like that. And then another one. And that's pretty much it. Like a quick little Bart Simpson. Yas. He's gonna be saying, Yas, Queen, Slay. That's it. Like quick little Bart Simpson. We're just trying, we're having fun, okay? And you can do it too. So now I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna show you a little time lapse of me drawing my outfit of today. And yes, today is the day after the rest of the video. <laughs> Ta-da! And that's it. Really easy, really simple. Fair enough, probably this is not as complex as maybe one of these guys, but it's really like that. I just draw like whatever without being super careful and yeah, that's the fun of it. So I hope you like these little tips. I hope you try them out. If you do, please tag at the gypsy time mega doodle. That's gonna be a nice tag. So yeah, try it out and post it in your stories or in your feed and do hashtag the gypsy time mega doodles yeah cool okay guys so this is it this is the end and i hope you enjoyed it i hope you had fun um i hope you tried it but if you don't it's fine you can just watch that's fun too i love watching other people drawing and not doing anything <laughs> but yeah i hope you tried it i hope you had fun and please like Close up for the real talk. Don't worry. Don't pressure yourself. Please don't compare yourself. Just have fun. Okay? That's the point. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. And I'll see you next time. Um, yes, I have a script because I don't know. Big wish. <laughs> yes, queen. Oh no, this is gonna make noise. Yas Queen, <laughs> rub that carpet. Let me just do a bit like a beach canal. Work, work with me. <laughs>